bought our farm uh, about 20 years ago, our main farm. At that time we had been um, farming mostly at his mom and dad's. Um, the hog barns were at uh, my husband's parents' place. We had about 300 cell fare to finish operation. And we did about 1,500 acres of row crops. And we're always looking for something different to do. So in 1996, we came up with this idea about a greenhouse. We put up a greenhouse, it's 30 by 48. Sold flowers, it went pretty well, and it just kind of went from there. And the greenhouse took over. As we got into flowers, um, we started growing more produce. Uh, the hog market went south. It uh, wasn't very good, so we got out of that. And uh, the crops, you know, we don't have good ground. We have small fields. Uh, developers were buying the land and so we were just you know it was kind of a that was dying for us as the uh, produce and the flowers started growing for us and then we were always kind of looking at how to extend our season and Mike Score one time says well there's this idea coming up and the greenhouse you might be able to get it if you're interested so we said sure we are so we sent a letter in and next thing we know David got a hold of us and he says, yeah, we got this greenhouse. I said, you know, we can, it's an experiment. We feel like we're the guinea pigs <laughs> um, to grow winter vegetables with no heat. So they came out. We actually got two of them. One of them is uh, mine and my husband's. And the other one belongs to my four children. And they make all the decisions on what they plant. They decided how to, you know, divvy everything up. And, you know, they're responsible for that completely. Um, it's good. It gives them, you know, some ownership. Um, gives them some responsibility and you know they kind of can do their own thing they they kind of learn on their own and um, so that's how we got started in this this is I think our fourth season in here the nice thing about it is if we get stuff seeded the first week of February we can be selling by mid-March and uh, it's nice to have some income in March and April um, then if we get going on it you know in the fall good we can also be selling in, in uh, November and December so I think that you know I maybe we can say what was pretty amazing I think about the whole project was that there was a really wide range of, of growers and grower experience. So there were some people that were certified organic, some people that were conventional, some people that were growing organically but weren't certified. Um, there were some people that were doing things on a scale where it was only their hoop house. They had little to no outdoor space and some people like the Fusiliers who were doing you know, 80 to 100 acres um, outdoor vegetable production as well as um, all the greenhouse space that they have. Um, primarily we've been growing um, mostly lettuce. Uh, a lettuce mix works really well. Um, we do a lot of um, bib lettuce and a lot of leaf lettuce, green and red. We have done romaine, but I'm not real crazy about that, so we kind of gave that up. Uh, those are primarily what we grow. We have a little trouble with uh, spinach. Uh, we had aphids in here. We tried to use an organic soap or something and it just they just took off. We ended up plowing that crop under. So spinach has given us a little bit of trouble. It seems to be more picky or something. So sometimes we do really good with spinach and sometimes we don't. The bad thing is we can sell the spinach if we can grow it. Um, but just growing it seems to be a little bit of a struggle for us. The so lettuce, we have no problem growing the lettuce. And uh, we've always been able to sell everything, everything that we've grown. They've really kind of done some unique things and because of their size they've been able to do some things with the hoop houses also that some of the other smaller farmers haven't been able to do or, or don't have the opportunity to do. So they go to, I think this year they're going to 18 farmers markets per week. What a lot of the farmers do when they're direct marketing is and are growing in a lot of spaces, they plant the house to uh, multiple crops at one time so that you might be harvesting out lettuce and beets and green onions and uh, head lettuce and salad mix and spinach all at the same time and it's all planted in there um, or in the summer it might be you know some sunflowers and tomatoes and peppers and eggplant and cucumbers you have all these different crops but what they were able to do because they have so many markets that they go to is come in and prep the whole house and then plant it to one thing so a lot of what they did was say come in, till it all up in the spring, plant it all the head lettuce. You know, and they may have 4,000 heads of head lettuce in there. And they may only have a two week window where that head lettuce is all gonna be ready and good. But since you know, in that two weeks, they'll have been at 36 farmer's markets and they can move that kind of volume of head lettuce. Or they can move that volume if they're doing all tomatoes. Or I know they did all sunflowers in one of them. So it, it was pretty unique to work with them and see, okay, if you have these larger markets or these larger farms 
in terms of vegetable production. How do hoop houses fit into those? Because so many of the farmers that are using hoop houses are that small scale, you know, less than 10 acres, um, and it works really well in those markets. But it was really nice to see how it can work with the farmer who is growing on much larger acreage and how it can fit into that type of operation as well, that it's not just something that small scale farmers are doing. Uh, most of what we grow goes through the farmers markets. We do 20 some farmers markets in the metro Detroit area and uh, that's where almost all of our produce goes. Um, the stuff that we harvest like in March and April, November and December, most of that goes to Ann Arbor farmers market because that's a year-round market. Most of our markets are like you know May or June through October. Um, so a lot of the stuff has already, you know, come and gone or it hasn't gotten ready yet by the time those are there. I have been selling to schools since last fall. Um, they take everything I can grow. I haven't done a lot of this with them yet. Um, I can get a higher dollar at the farmer's markets than I can at the schools. At this point I can sell it off. Um, in the future we'd like to do, convert some of our flower houses over to vegetables. Or maybe this whole house would be spinach. Another whole house would be leaf lettuce, another whole house might be, be lettuce mix. And if we get to that point, that'll be more than we can sell, say, at Ann Arbor. So in that case, I would probably look to sell it to the schools because they're very interested in buying more and more produce from us. We have been selling flowers here since we opened our first greenhouse in 1996. Um, the farm, and we just pretty much just sold flowers. We didn't sell produce or anything here. We didn't really have anything set up to do it. Um, we purchased that property about a year and a half ago. It's Last mid-July, we opened across the street. Um, so we really haven't only had a couple of months over there, we've really sold the produce. Um, the flower sales were good over there. Um, now we've just got to get the people back for the produce. So it's, you know, it's going to take a bit to get that really where we want it to be. Uh, this summer, we're trying something different. Uh, my son Chad, my youngest, he wanted to grow celery. So he seeded celery this spring, and then we decided let's try it in the greenhouse. So they actually have I think a couple thousand uh, celeries grown in the other house. Um, looks like it's going really well. It's taking a lot of time. Uh, they're doing a lot of hoeing and they can't keep up with the weeds. That's a big problem we have because we don't like to spray a whole lot in here. Um, they've had to cut tiles. Um, you have to have tile on it. It's so that when you uh, we put it at the bottom of the celery to stop the light from hitting the, the bottom of it so the leaves won't grow. So you have a nice you know, straight stalk that that doesn't have leaves. <laughs> the kids are working that, they're doing a good job. It looks like it's getting fairly ready to harvest. So if that works out really well, what we'll probably do is maybe put celery in both houses next summer. Um, a summer crop is really hard to do because days like today, you know, it's 90 degrees out, it's humid, and nobody wants to work inside here. So um, we've grown tomatoes. We had tomatoes in here a couple years ago. We had them strung all the way up. Uh, they grew really well, but again, it's just hard to get in here and work, especially when we're outside. You know, we've got 100 acres of vegetables outside that we're working with. It's hard to come in here and, it's, and actually spend the right time in the, you know, in the heat of the summer. Yeah, they definitely had some challenges with labor. Um, I think part of that too was them learning just how to use the hoop house, because although they had the greenhouse experience, they didn't have the hoop house experience. And so, you know, in a greenhouse, if you've got exhaust fans on, you can cool it relatively easy and you can be in there working and moving around and so I think for them it was learning or it's still learning that okay if you want to harvest stuff and it's the summer you've got to be in there you know at 5 30 or 6 o'clock harvesting and getting that stuff out and then come you know 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock then you are moving out to the field to start harvesting field stuff or um, so I think there's a a learning curve that's involved there as well of when to harvest, when to get in there, when to do stuff, and when to not be in there just because of the heat in general and how that fits into your operation. Uh, what I want to do is this year is the first of August um, either go with a combination of um, carrots, green onions, and beets. I think if I can get them in by the first of August I'd be able to sell them you know later on this fall into the winter and then we'll put um, the lettuce mix and lettuce in the other house and uh, we shouldn't have any trouble selling that, you know, November and December, you know, until it's gone. And then we'll come back in the first of February with more lettuces and then with more um, spinach, hopefully. <laughs> you know, it's a good idea, you know, as long as you have the time for it and, you know, you have a plan. You've got to have a plan what you're going to grow and how you're going to sell it and, you know, how you're going to 
to say you know, deal with the you know a hoe works really good if you have the time um, but you know if all you're going to do is hoe you'd be hoeing a lot we brought organic um, compost in organic soil I guess so we thought you know because we thought even though we're not certified organic we try to grow it organically like that's what had these lot of chemicals inside but it came in full of ragweed and we've been fighting weeds every since so you know you bring your soil in be careful what you get make sure you get something that's clean so you don't you know start off start off with a problem like we did hopefully you have good compost or you make your own compost um, you make sure that it's heated up you're you're gonna have you're probably gonna have weed seed in it but if you heat it up um, let it sit let it germinate some of those weed seeds will germinate and turn it again so there's a couple options you can manage it before and I think it's a both and it's not an either or that you manage it before you bring it in so that you're getting it hot you're trying to kill those weed seeds in there you're still probably going to bring in some weed seed but then rather than bring it in and plant right away something that some farmers are doing is although we like to have things planted right away is wait a week what put that compost in water it let those seeds germinate come in and either cultivate that if you're using a tractor or till it or weed it with a hoe or that and then plant into that so you're kind of trying to get all those weed seeds to germinate or those that are going to germinate to germinate and then planting after you've been able to weed it so it's a whole lot easier to weed when you don't have something planted than when you do you really if you really did it right you could probably get eight to ten thousand dollars in your first season in a full year especially if you crop it three times. This is a 30 by 96. You could turn it three times if you really wanted to. Um, the problem we have with turning it the third time is we're so busy with our other crops. But another problem too, you know, if you want to use uh, um, herbicides to spray your crop, you got to be careful because if you're going to spray a, you know, spray for lettuce, then you want to grow tomatoes, then you want to put spinach back in the fall. You got to be careful because your the chemicals you use, you know, might not carry through so you really got you really got to be careful and watch what you're doing there too um, we like to transplant our lettuce because we can seed it in the greenhouses um, then we can transplant it and it'll be up and you know it's ready to go a lot quicker than if we do a direct seeding we have better luck transplanting it um, we do direct seed the lettuce mix and the spinach but anything that's more of a head you know like leaf lettuce and that bib lettuce we try to transplant all that because we can get a head start the only problem is, you know, if you get too many of them going up, you've got to find other outlets to sell them at. Um, you know, restaurants would probably be a good outlet or hospitals or schools. The difference is they don't pay quite what you can get if you retail it directly yourself. You know, you've got a wholesale market, which is, you know, a cheaper market, and you've got a retail market, which is the other end. And then if you sell, like, to schools or hospitals or restaurants, usually you're somewhere in between, so the margins aren't quite as high. So like anything else, if you get an abundance of them, you know, you've got oversupply. It's the supply economics, you know, supply and demand. The more you have, the, you know, the less demand, you know, for that product. And there's not too many markets that are open in the winter where you can go to a farmer's market and, and sell them. I think we don't want to paint the picture of if you put up a hoop house, you're going to make money hand over fist. I think some people are going to make a lot of money farming, and that's a good thing and hoop houses are a piece that adds into that especially in northern climates where we don't where we can't grow year-round outside i think it's also important to remember that um, like any business you know you can have the tools but you have to know how to use those tools and what the people who are using those tools well are are generating income i think where we're headed is that hoop houses at least on small to mid-size farms and on some of the larger farms like Fusiliers and others um, but especially on the small and mid-sized farms are going to be like a tractor or a tiller where it's a piece of the farm you know why wouldn't what do you mean you don't have a hoop house on your farm or how do you do things without a hoop house on your farm you know similar well how do you do stuff with if you don't t without a, even walk behind tiller or without a tractor and a tiller or something like that I think it's going to be you know, kind of a, a given on farms and, and I'm not worried, and I don't think others are worried, that somehow that market is going to be flooded, that the amount of food that we consume just in Michigan, I mean, if we just take on campus, so you know, Mike Cam and John Bierenbaum did a study with some students a few years ago that if MSU was to buy all the salad mix for, to 
stock the salad bars on campus. It would take 130 by 96 foot hoop houses growing salad mix year round or growing lettuce year round just to satisfy the campus market. In our season is May to October. We sell flowers, you know, starting the 1st of May, um, right through all our bedding plants. We get into produce, you know, our fruits and vegetables, and by Halloween, your pumpkin season is pretty much done. So what this does is it gives us money in mid-March and April, and then more into November and December, um, where we can go down. We can go down to the farmers market um, in the spring. And needs to come home with a thousand dollars in one day if we have enough lettuce to take with us because it sells so well. We might get a tad more for it, but it's not like we're getting a lot more for it. It's just giving us more product to sell um, outside of those six months. And the longer we can bring money in, the easier it is to pay our bills.